If you're posting news to your company's intranet, there are a few features that you really should make sure you understand. Today, I'm gonna walk through these features so that you have a understanding of what they are and you can use them in the future. Probably the most important feature to know when you're talking about publishing pages and news articles within SharePoint is publishing. Publishing is something that everybody probably has heard of, but you really need to make sure you understand the details of how it works so that you can be effective at delivering news to your users. Publishing is a feature that allows you to have multiple versions of a page or a news article. And one version can be in what's called draft mode. And then when you want everyone to see it, it would then go to published mode. Um, some things that people don't think about when they hear that term is the fact that it's making multiple revisions. So what that allows you to do is go back in history and look at previous versions. It also enables the review process of a page. So you can create content before it's published to everyone in your organization and have users review it and give you feedback before you have to make it go live. In addition to having the ability to just have major versions, so knowing you know what this page looked like a year ago or a week ago, if you're making multiple edits to a page that is in draft mode, there's also multiple minor revisions. So that allows you to look at maybe you've made several tweaks to the page while you're getting ready for it to be published. You can actually look at all of those changes before you go and publish it. The default functionality is once you publish it, those intermediary or minor changes go away. But while you're editing the page, you have a lot of flexibility in being able to look at what you've done over the process of developing the page. If you're looking at version history and you want to know whether or not something is a draft version or a published version, you can know by the number. So the numbers would be something like 1.0, 1.1, or 2.0. Anything that has a 0 0.0 at the end is a major version. Anything that has a number, another number like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 at the end, those are all draft versions of the page. Another thing you should be aware of is that soon Microsoft will be releasing a feature where you don't even have to check in your changes to allow another group of people to be able to look at your content. So let's say there's a small group of you who are all working on the same page to um, create some content. If I wanted to share it with just that small group to iterate on that content without having other uh, approvers or reviewers be able to see it, you'll soon be able to do that. The second thing you need to know is that you can actually compare what changed between two different versions of a news article. To do that, you go into the page details of any news article, come down to the version history, and not only does on this page it tells you uh, in text, in words, what changed, you can also highlight, turn on this option, which will allow you to highlight changes that happened on the page. So when you turn this on, you can select any two versions. And when you compare them, you'll see a visual representation of what changed on this news article between the previous version and the current version. Another important feature to understand is the ability to schedule your news articles. So this is something where, let's say, you have an announcement going out or maybe benefits are changing and they change on a specific day or a specific time. You don't want to be waiting around trying to you know, wait for the specific second and go publish this page. Um, ideally, you'd like to schedule it out and have the system manage when that gets launched, which, good news, you can do that on any pages library in SharePoint. So in order to do this, you need to be an owner of the site and then simply go into the pages library for that site and you'll see an option uh, right at the top that says scheduling. And once you have selected that, you can simply turn on or turn off scheduling. Please note that if you had scheduling turned on and you turn it off, anything that was scheduled to be published in the future, it's automatically gonna be published the moment you turn it off. So now that you have scheduling turned on, to use it on any page, just open it up, edit the page, go into the page details, and now you'll see an option for scheduling that you can turn on, and you can actually enter a time and date that you'd like this article to be published. The next feature I wanna talk about is comments. Comments allow users to provide feedback on any page. So if you go in and scroll down to any page in SharePoint, you can 
see an option to go type in a comment and click post. Um, that option seems really good and is on by default in most cases. However, there's a major drawback to the comments feature in SharePoint today. That is the only person who gets notified when a comment is made is the author of the page. So it's not centralized in any way, which makes it very difficult when you're talking about news that's across your organization and being able to manage that and respond to it. So maybe somebody's asking a question about that news article in the comment. How do you know that it happened and make sure they get feedback? There's a couple different ways to solve that problem. Number one, you can turn off comments either at the tenant level or at an individual page level. There is a way that you can get better notifications on comments and that would be to build a custom Power Automate that will notify whoever you want, but it takes a little bit of work and it might not be worth it um, if you have other ways for users to engage with you on your news articles. The next feature that you should understand is the recommended content that is available on the bottom of news articles. This is something that you can turn off and on on a specific page, and it. The, but the thing to realize is that you have no control over what will be displayed. Microsoft is using artificial intelligence to investigate what other users have been looking at that have also looked at this page or that are uh, related to the user who's currently on the page and displaying content they feel is relevant to that user. You have no way to control what goes into that section of the page. So your only options are either to turn it off on every page that you don't want it to show or to go into the site and there's actually a feature called recommendation feature you can actually disable that feature and it'll disable that component for all pages on your site. Usually what Microsoft recommends is good enough for what most pages need. If you really have something you want to promote a particular page, I would recommend turning it off and adding your own custom uh, content to the page to highlight a particular element or some other piece of content. So the last feature I wanna to highlight today is approvals. So. If you're in a scenario where maybe uh, you have a team that's developing content, but you want it to go through a review process before it actually is published, you can enable an approval process on the pages library. And what that will do is whenever somebody makes a change, they can't actually publish that change immediately. All they can do is submit that to the approval process. And then the approval process takes over and requests approvals from you know whoever you want. It could be multiple users, it could be a single user. And once the, all of that approval process is complete, that is when the page and the news article will actually be published or scheduled to be published. So to give you a little details about how that works, if you go into the pages library, there's this automate option, which you can go under power automate and you can say, I wanna configure the page approval flow. By default, you're gonna get a very basic flow. So if I click create flow, you're gonna get a very basic flow and that flow is just gonna say, hey, um, when somebody makes a change, who would you like it to be sent for approval to? And then when they say yes, we're gonna actually approve it and send out some notifications. Even though the initial approval flow is very simple, it's a starting point for you to make any type of approval flow you want. Hopefully this gives you a few pointers of how to investigate some of the infrastructure behind publishing news articles. If you're looking for more content like this, be sure to subscribe. We have actually a few more videos coming out focused on how to create really good news articles, so the content of the news article. And you'll be notified if you subscribe to our channel. If one of these tips really helped you out, I'd love to hear about it. Please comment down below. Thanks for watching, have a great day.